Um, hello everyone, uh, thank you for attending Squid Game at UCI. My name <laughs> My name is Jerry Lee. I'm an associate professor of applied linguistics in the Department of English here at UCI. And I'm currently serving as director of the program in Global Languages and Communication, which is one of the co-hosts of this event. The other two co-hosts are the International Student Excellence Program and the Center for Critical Korean Studies. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge the co-sponsors of this event, the Department of East Asian Studies, Illuminations, the Department of Asian American Studies, the Department of Film and Media Studies, and the Center for Asian Studies, all with UCI. Our distinguished speaker for the first part of this event is Professor Kyunghyun Kim of the Department of East Asian Studies. The founding director of the Center for Critical Korean Studies Professor Kim has recently been, been interviewed by numerous media outlets about Squid Game. The speaking event will be moderated by Professor Joseph... Is it Chong Hyun or Chong Chong Hyun? <laughs> Sorry, I just call him Joe. I don't know his name. Sorry. Uh, a professor of English and current director of the Center for Critical Korean Studies at UCI. His research focuses on, among other topics, financial precarity and income inequalities in South Korea, which, as we all know, is a prominent theme in Squid Game. Okay, so uh, before I turn it over to our speakers, uh, after the speaking event, please join us right outside for a game of marbles or a game of dakjin uh, for a chance to win a pack of samyang uh, damyang, which, which we have uh, 456 packs of. So, so we all get the reference, right? Okay, so, um, and we also have three separate drawings for UCI students and employees. One for students, one for staff, and one for faculty. It's free to enter, and you have a chance of winning a, a clear piggy bank with various prizes. Okay, so uh, please join me in welcoming our speakers. Thank you all for coming. Um, I can't uh, uh, help but say I'm a little bit terrified by the, the, the number of people here, but it's kind of great. Um, we're going to kind of run this as a kind of com a conversation for about 20 minutes and then open up for discussion. Can you guys hear me so far? Um, we're going to talk for about 20 minutes and then have a conversation and, 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 uh, 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 and then uh, we'll have a Q&A afterwards. Before I begin, though, uh, let me say, just reiterate that I am, despite the difficulty of pronouncing my middle name, I'm, uh, my name is Joseph Jun. I'm the director of uh, the Center for Critical Korean Studies. Uh, and this is uh, the first, I you know, realize we're co-sponsoring this, of many events that we have, uh, have, uh, will have throughout the course of, uh, of the academic year. Um, and so I do happen to have with me a sign-up sheet. If you are interested in uh, CCKS events, please just sign this, uh, sign you know, here, you know, put your email address here. Uh, let me pass this around, it'll be going around. Um, I'm here with uh, my colleague uh, Kim, uh, uh, Kim. <laughs> name I can pronounce very easily, uh, <laughs> Jerry. Uh, and uh, so Kim's been um, uh, taking a lot of press, uh, requests from the press in the wake of the success, the sort of unprecedented success of this show. Um, and so I thought we'd start just by, start by asking Kim uh, to tell us a little about the experiences uh, and the kinds of questions uh, that the press has been typically asking him as a way to kind of uh, start a conversation here. So maybe, Ken, you could talk about some of the questions that you've been answering and how you've been, how you've been asked and how you've been answering them. Yeah, thanks. Um, first, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, <laughs> the organizers of skill of uh, Jerry here. I mean, he's just uh, been tremendous. Also, Annabelle over at the uh, communication, and she's just been tremendous, as well as uh, our uh, our, our staff, uh, Jun and um, uh, Michelle and, and Veronica, has been really, really helpful, and, as well as you. Okay. Thank you <laughs> for making all this possible. I, I, uh, I, they were in my wildest dreams, right? Uh, when I have actually entertained the idea that I would talk about, I don't know, like a game that I used to play, yes, Squid Game, right? What do you call game? That uh, you know, when I was nine or ten, before leaving Korea, as well as uh, you know, all these games that actually appear in the in the, in the, in the uh, 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 successful uh, Netflix series, Mungaku Chikesu, the Marvels, you know, Mungaku Chikesu, they translate as uh, uh, 
green light, uh, red, red, light, green light. Yeah, red light, green light, and then um, all these uh, uh, other uh, childhood games that appear on the television show, uh, the, the streaming television show, and then uh, and, and maybe have the opportunity to play some of these games outside and once I'm done with. So I'm going to rush through this. But uh, I had uh, probably no less than you know, 10 interview requests, uh, actually a lot more, and then uh, you know, I, I said uh, to myself, it's just about a week, but I can't do this anymore. You know, Netflix has to start paying me <laughs> <laughs> if I continue on this. Basically, uh, Zoom after Zoom after Zoom sometimes. And uh, you know, I forget uh, at some point, you know, uh, who am I talking to, right? Uh, what press, what language? And so I just uh, stopped at around 10. But a lot of times that would be, you know, pretty repetitive, the, the questions. Uh, first they would ask me, um, why do you think the, the show is so successful? Um, it's, uh, and, you know, only about three weeks ago I learned that it was, you know, going to be the most successful streaming television content ever created, right? It's like a Titanic of the you know, streaming television. I, I, I didn't think that Koreans would be ever in you know, a place right, to make such a successful uh, show, but it has happened. Um, second question, is there a particular kind of Korean degree, in, ingredient that makes it so successful? Is there a kind of follow-up questions they are asked? Um, third question, which I thought was a little bit problematic, but some, not all of them, uh, but some uh, Western media journalists would, would ask me, uh, are Koreans really this desperate <laughs> uh, to be signing up for a game show where elimination means death? Uh, and I would be like, oh, it would be so cringy, right? I'd be like, that's almost racist. <laughs> I don't think uh, in, again, we, I, I just got off a class where we talked about melodrama versus realism. But in realistic, right, uh, uh, portrayal of things, this is not possible, okay? This is totally a fantasy, kind of a uh, make-believe world that the Squid Game has created. None of this uh, would be possible in realistic kind of play, uh, that, uh, and, and, and certainly in South Korea. Yes, uh, it, is, it is true that the, that ratio has risen, uh, radical polarizing of classes because of obviously, you know, um, you know, after effects of uh, neoliberal capitalism, all of that stuff has, has made it you know pretty cruel. But I don't think no anybody would actually be signing up for this kind of a game. Uh, I, I don't think it's first possible to actually stage the game, <laughs> and then second, you know, it's impossible to actually find the players for this game. So um, those are the kind of again um, questions that I'll continuously yeah. get over and over and over. Um, so in terms of like, so by, you know, answers we get formulaic, pretty much. <laughs> uh, I would, I would almost memorize, you know, like, I mean, I, I don't never, I don't do like real memorization, but I, I would just like, be like, have, have an answer ready when they ask you, okay, why was it so successful? And I would be just like, you know, uh, depending on the media, a lot of times, you know, this television spot, you only get three to four minutes, so you really have to give you know uh, one um, sentence or two uh, responses. Uh, radio a little bit longer. Sometimes you get ten minutes, and the print media you get a lot, a lot more time. Uh, but a lot of times, what I would say to the first question, why do you think it's so successful? I would say, well, I mean, it's a child, childlike game gone spooky, you know, and creepy. That's uh, one of the things that I think very uh, germane to a lot of the horror kind of content, not just here, but you know, um, you can make a case that uh, you know, some of the most uh, uh, horrible or creepiest stories that I've, I've, I've read or you know, seen in the American tradition is like Pet Cemetery. I don't know if you guys know, or, you know, like, a, like your favorite pet, you know, gone just Ari, right? Just Ari and, and, and completely creepy, right? That's the, Kind of a thing that uh, that's uh, 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 creeps you out the most. Freddy Krueger, all of those things, you know, like you, you think Halloween, you know, costumes and Halloween uh, uh, villains and evil, you know, kind of creatures out there in terms of the horror tradition. You know, that's one of the things that you try to find, you try to tap into. What is the most pristine, you know, innocent kind of memories you got? And these are childhood games, childhood memories, and then try to try to latch that on to a certain kind of again horror ingredient. Uh, what 
Squid Game has done, and I think that, that is one of the ways in which it has uh, found success. And to marry that on to, uh, as I said, the neoliberal capitalism and the, and, the, and the desperate nature in which this has divided classes, the combination of the two factors, I think, is one of the things that actually made it really successful, not only in Korea, but all yeah. across the world. If I can interject here for a second, sure. I, I, yeah. I, I, you know, one of the, this is the question that, you know, that a lot of people um, in our line of work have been asked about its popularity to explain it. Um, and it's, it's a question a lot of people just sort of asked, you know, because it's, there are a lot of, you know, for example, critiques of capitalism, um, you know, in Korean television shows or Korean movies. Um, and so the question is, why this one, right? Um, and and, and uh, your, your answer is really interesting, though, because it, 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 I guess, like, the, 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 the other example that you commonly hear is that this is such a uh, common this is such a common and pervasive experience in global capitalism uh, now uh, around the world that a lot of people identify with it. Um, and that seems right on a certain level, right? But it seems like it doesn't quite get at what, why this particular um, kind of show, why this particular uh, you know, uh, generic formation, what, why, why this one in particular is popular. So gonna, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, what it is about it? That allow that blends like critique, but also um, I don't know. It's strangely fun, as, as you say. Yeah. Well, I think it takes an approach uh, that does have a way of humanizing. You know, I mean, I, a lot of times this is what you will get in the, in the more popular you know, press media, right? Mm -hmm. uh, why the popular screen game terrifies? You know, like it, it talks about. Um, you know, this is a. Quote from I'm citing a Frank Bruni who wrote the uh, Why the Popularity of the Squid Game Terrifies Me. Um, <clears throat> it says uh, the fact that they're not repelled, the audiences of the Squid Game, repelled by the incessant bloodletting and by many characters who are more in cruelty to one another, says something weird and disturbing about modern sensibilities. We are entertained by extremes. A 23-year-old who zoomed through Squid Game in two days told me. So this is a kind of a typical kind of response. You know, it's just it's just gotten to the extreme, and, and, and we're frightened by the prospect that you know the world is not uh, uh, taking this really seriously, right? the cruelty of capitalism and the creepiness that it is in general. I all I thought it was the I, I, I my response to that is usually listen. You have to watch the end. And it was my students who actually told me, because I was creeped out in the first two episodes, and I, I uh, you know, I've been, ever since I've been asked, what do you think about Squid Game by, uh, you know, Western media? I, uh, I, at the time, I didn't watch it, so I was a kind of a late comer to this game. And I started watching it, and by the second episode, I was so disgusted, you know, by <laughs> some, of, some of my students are here, I believe. But I was so disgusted and repelled, exactly, you know, I, I, I like the response uh, by uh, uh, Frank Bruni, he saying this, this is, I can't accept this, this is intolerable. But toward the end, I think I got it. You know, the message was actually, I thought, the opposite. You know, it's not accentuating cruelty, but it actually accentuates for me humanity that may be missing from the cruelty of the system. Okay. So this gets to me uh, 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 the maybe maybe something a little bit more I don't know I'm not a profound person but maybe a little bit more deeper, <laughs> where I am trying to come to terms with wait, you know, Hyun the the main character and we, we definitely see Squid Game and the cruelty of capitalism you know, through his perspective he's a main character, they, he's the one, who well, I've stated this over and over and over is that. His fault is that he is too caring. Okay, this is his culpability. Okay, this is why he couldn't succeed. And at the end of the day, you know, unlike all these other maybe dramas, you have a celebration and a parade of the, of, the, of, the, of the winner who actually survived all this ordeal. At the end of the day, we have not a celebration of the winning, a mourning of the winning. 
right? Which you really do get at the end of the show or at the end of the episodes. I'm sorry, but for those of you who haven't, you can just walk out of here. <laughs> close your eyes or you know, close, your, close your ears for the next 10 seconds. But there is a serious warning involved, right? Which is to me uh, not dissimilar to, uh, this is, a, this is a maybe a way of answering my, the second question that I usually get, why, can you compare it to the parasite and you know, can you talk about the creative, creative ingredients in, the, in this? Very similar, right? Parasite, uh, another spoiler, but it's not Parasite, so I'm not giving you just one spoiler, but two spoilers here. But Parasite is also about mourning, yeah, of the, of the deceased, and, and it, 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 it veers so far away from a very simplistic uh, a prevailing of the good over the evil, which is one of the things that you've got to have in the successful formula of any kind of blockbuster commercial hit film or a hit drama, okay? You can't leave it at that, you know, just, oh, man, it sucks, you yeah, know, that kind of, yeah, but both, both contexts, Parasite, yes, it attacks and, and tries to uh, complicate uh, neoliberal capitalism, but leaves you with a very, very bittersweet, and, and I accentuate the bitterness even more, right, the bitter kind of sense of this. Okay, it's not about, and, and that gets us to, to think about what? Life is not about winning and losing. Okay? We gotta go back to our purpose here. <laughs> Maybe an uh, extension question of why we live. I, I don't want to like involve us in a kind of I don't know, philosophical kind of meanderings with Pascal or anything like that. But we, we go there. We, it, it, you know, kind of naturally gravitate toward. <laughs> Maybe being good is really difficult. And Koreans have maybe uh, uh, anchored the plot line here, where even though it seems very simple, you know, through games, it is hard to be good. Okay. It's hard to be good, and, and, and being, being too good sometimes it sucks. So I, I'm not sure I can go <laughs> all the way, the way there with you with the sort of utopian, uh -huh. almost utopian qualities that you're ascribing to it. Uh -huh. But the place where what you're saying makes the most sense to me is what the episode that is, is I think, my favorite episode, but also talking to a lot of people, uh, a lot of people find this one the most gutting, which is the, the Marbles episode, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And, and it's, you, you agree. Um, and the reason why it's the most gutting, I think, in a lot of cases is that it's no longer, I'm just trying to survive or I'm trying to win. You're confronted with the fact in that episode that in order for me to survive, I have to kill you. Right. And that there's a kind of um, intimacy um, in that episode that makes the, 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 the sort of um, result of that episode uh, really uh, hard, right? It's also the episode where um, the game in which, um, you know, in the, the, the first Red Light, Green Light game, you know, I forgot the number, but it's a, like a significant number that's immediately um, uh, eliminated. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a kind of arbitrariness to the, the number of people that are eliminated in each case. In the, the Marvels game, it's exactly half, right? Um, and there's something really um, uh, uh, compelling about um, uh, the way in which that episode makes the intimacy each, between the members of each uh, pair, the kind of central um, uh, sort of uh, uh, th uh, thematic, but also the thing that needs to be kind of overcome in order for uh, to, uh, to produce the survival. Right. Did you want to? Is, yeah, so, the, yeah, we can, uh, we got it queued up. Uh, we're right, right there. Here. We didn't coordinate this, but we we're uh, actually on the same page. Uh, and I particularly liked uh, this relationship, you know, in the moment, the two girls. Yeah, Sega can. Um, it's Hebe from North Korea. She's a, she's a defector from North Korea, and the other girl uh, is from uh, uh, South Korea, and she has her own you know, trauma and pain. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll just watch. Uh, Oh, 
Okay, that's good enough. Yeah. Um, just to just to just to give you an idea, I mean, I, I love this scene. First, it's, it's fun because they uh, mentioned Igaman. Yeah. Uh, Igaman, uh, they, they're quoting basically a line from a not a great movie, but you know, kind of an enjoyable, you know, like a, um, entertainment movie uh, called uh, Inside the Enemy. And uh, Igaman has that line. Uh, he, he's actually about this. Uh, what is it? He has a cigar, and he's a gangster, and he's a hoodlum, and he has a line, he fumbles it up, he, he gets confused between uh, Maldiv and Mojito, right? And he keeps saying, I'm going to have a drink of Maldiv when I get to Mojito, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so she's, she's doing it, in translation it got lost, it's, nobody was laughing here, but that's, uh, that's what she's actually doing. But even if it's also the actor that plays the... Yeah, exactly. So, so it actually forbodes that kind of, uh, you know, the, the, it's, uh, what do you call it, the self-reflexive that way, self-conscious of uh, actually Yigaman is going to be the actor and he's the, he's the guy. Who's oh, I should just make that explicit. He's the actor that plays the, oh, what's the, the guy with the front man? The front man. Yeah, the front man. Yeah, he's the, the master mind. Yes. And the, and the brother. I'm giving you more. <laughs> Spoiler here. But uh, yeah, the missing brother as well. So you know, we, we we get that clue. But also, to me, what is interesting is only the girls know how to play. Only the woman is capable of playing the game well. Okay, that's to me an important takeaway from this scene, and maybe the entire sequence of the episodes of Squid Game. You gotta play it right. Okay. Yes, we're gonna all die <laughs> at some point. It doesn't matter who wins or who loses. We're going to try to create, even in our mind, even in our psychology, we're going to create a, even in the dystopian, the most dystopian moments, we are capable because we're humans, we're great, we're not animals, we can recreate utopia. Okay? And that's the place where she goes. Okay? Yes, we don't actually see them physically in Maldives or sipping in a champagne or, or, or mojito. But it goes there, okay? Our psychology goes there, creating an enclave of utopia, which to me is a capability of not just Koreans, but human beings. Uh, even at a time when we've come to understanding of you know, mechanism and capitalism, and it really sucks, okay? We can still have fun with work, okay? And life can still be enjoyed. So I thought one of the takeaways from Squid Game, and perhaps the Korean saucer ingredient uh, to the worldwide success that he has, you know, been able to achieve. So that's, you know, what I've got. And, um, you know, maybe. <laughs> or, uh, we'll, we'll open up for questions in a second. I just want to ask one final question, though. Um, and I, I rewatched the final episode. And, you know, if you remember the final episode, you know, he's heading down the jet plane, uh, on, onto the plane. He's going to go somewhere, maybe have mojitos in the Maldives. I don't know. I um, thought it was uh, to meet his daughter. Oh, that's right, that's yeah. right. <laughs> US, yeah. um, and he calls the number on the back of the card, right? And mm -hmm. then, uh, then he decides to turn around, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we know uh, there's going to be a second season at that point. It's almost like he's walking, <laughs> it's almost like it's the director, famous, uh, you know, in interviews, he, he's talked about how, how difficult it was to make the show and how actually he doesn't, was really uh, uh, tempted not to make a second season. Um, but. But the second season seems to me poses a problem, right? I mean, for those of you who watch, for example, Hunger Games is the, the example I can think of in the US context. You know, battle royale genre of films like this one, where you know there's, there can be only one victor, have a really hard time with sequels, right? Because everybody's literally dead, except for one person, right? <laughs> and so they tend to move towards either narratives about escape or narratives of revolution. Those are the two sort of possibilities in general, right, for uh, the, the, the Japanese uh, 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 battle royale films, another example. That one moves more towards a narrative, narrative of escape. So the question I have for you, John, um, is like, what, what do you, I mean, like, I don't want you to predict the second season, but what, what, what do you think that we can, uh, Actually, I kind of, actually, I lied. I kind of do watch it for What can we anticipate for the second season? I don't know. In my mind, I wrote an entire script for <laughs> <laughs> the second season. Um, I don't know if Hong Kong Young is uh, willing to listen. 
actually, it's no, you know, this is also a point of contention. He no longer controls the content, so um, you know, it's all Netflix now. Right? Netflix for real? Yeah, I, I would have to pitch it to him. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think, as you, as you point out, it's going to be, you know, it's either escape or revolution. And I think because we haven't had a revolution, you know, maybe, maybe this is, this is, uh, it, it's waiting to happen. You know, it's, it's my, I don't know, forecast <laughs> prediction. Well, uh, I know the script isn't even out yet, but why not? Yeah. Well, maybe that this is a good time, uh, like, uh, you know, I'm not sure a Q&A is actually appropriate here because it's not as though, you know, it's not like we made the show or anything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you have a comment or a question, maybe we could kind of use this as a way to kind of open up the, uh, open up the conversation. Um, it, it, at a certain point, we're going to go outside and actually play these games. There will be no death, so there's no further <laughs> <laughs> about that. Um, but does anybody have any uh, comments or questions? Yes, please. Here. So one of the things that I've noticed after watching the show, um, obviously it's a critique on oh, all yeah. <laughs> All right, so after finishing the show, and then, you know, I'm just noticing, okay, sorry. So the show obviously is a critique on capitalism. Um, and yet, you know, here in the real world, the show is being, how do I say it? Uh, I don't want to say franchise, but you start seeing like, you know, people are making costumes, there's been like figurines released and whatnot. Mask. Oh, Matt, I thought you were telling me to put my down. Oh, no, I'm no. not going to do that. No, no. Um, anyways, um, so what if you, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's an anti-capitalistic movie, yet here in the real world in the U.S., we, company, big companies have capitalized off of it and people aren't really taking the message that, you know, there's issues with capitalism. They just see it as a fun show. Yeah, I mean, I get that question from time to time, you know. If it's a critique of capitalism, why is it, you know, why is it, why are there so many celebrations, so much celebration going on on uh, merchandising and, you know, like box office, you know, number one, you know, all of those things. And I, uh, and I usually say this. Um, the, the show, both this and Parasite, it's not going to like make you Marxist, right, out of the audience. You're not going to go out and all of a sudden like, you know, become immersed in reading, you know, Communist Manifesto, you know, <laughs> only because there is a critique of capitalism. That's, that's not the point. But I still do think it does generate a productive discussion, both, you know, Parasite and this movie, for us to actually, yeah, it's, it, it actually, you know, there's a there's a spreadability here, right? There is a certain kind of empathization going on with the characters' pitfalls and you know those kinds of things that that make us uh, to feel as if this is a point of identification and sympathization that is not some something that is far remote. You know, it's not exactly like Luke Skywalker and, and Darth Vader, but it's really among us. You know, character like you can exist among us. You know, yeah, no, it's Squid Game is, is not really sick, but you know, characters like you and the, and the journey and, and, the, and the free girls and so on and so forth is something that does make us a little bit better aware. So that's usually my response when uh, uh, a question gets asked in that orientation. I, I guess I would just add that, that you kind of have to also register the, the, the nature of the critique. I mean, like, you could think of, there are other kind of critiques of similar social systems that are just brutal, you know, and it's just, they're not fun movies. They, you know, everybody dies, well, everybody does die at this end, but it's still have, that's, that's interesting. Like, everybody dies at the end of this movie, which usually happens in, like, naturalist critiques, right? Uh, but then you are overwhelmed in those kinds of uh, uh, critiques with just the weight of this social system. Here, it's blend, I mean, that they still have that, literally almost everybody dies, except there's still uh, the, the, the availability of fantasy, right? The availability of participating in the, the, the fun spectacle of the, of, of, the, of, of, the, of, the, of the show in a way that isn't, a little, I think that's a little bit different from a lots of other modes of critique. So I think I just would, I'm not sure what to make of that, except just to register that it's a slightly different kind of critique 
uh, a social critique that we may be used to from, for example, you know, nationalism. May, may I ask a follow-up? Just, just a quick follow-up. There are so many trends out I'm so there. sorry. Yeah. Just that, that made me think of, due to like today's, you know, political climate of like, you know, anti-capitalist versus people who say the system isn't wrong, it's people. Would you guys say that um, media such as um, Parasite and Squid Game can like, continue to feel that polarization or like discussion of what system would work better within our society or what do you guys so uh, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's get a couple of let's, let's get three or four questions out, and then and then we'll like, sort of you know uh, have a conversation, and we'll try to answer a bunch of them together, or at least talk about them, not answer. Them. Hi. Um, so there was one character, the older woman. Um, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce her name, but she kind of just boggled me the whole time because she had very like erratic behavior in general, and she just like contrasted. So heavily with the other two female characters in the show, so I just wanted to hear like what's your interpretation of how she fits into the context of it all? Yeah, I mean, let's take a few more questions. Oh, okay. Let's get like, yeah, two more, and then we'll do the groups. Yeah. So first of all, thank you so much for hosting this. I think it's always interesting just to learn more about like popular media. So my kind of question was in terms of the capitalist critique. I actually thought the show was also doing a critique on like governments and national sentiment because. If you look at like Squid Game, for example, it really like heart like harnesses like the idea of like socioeconomic status, and I found it really interesting that you know the government wouldn't be able to mediate a problem like this, but uh, like I would say like a quote unquote foreign entity is the one that's trying to solve this problem. So do you think that there's also a critique on governments, and does Squid Game like propose a solution even though like the actual game itself is kind of ridiculous? Hi, also thank you so much for um, hosting this event, but um, in the current state of Korea, in South Korea, apparently there's half a million workers in strike that are dressing up as um, characters in Sweet Game. Also that... I'm sorry, what, say that again? Half a million um, in, in the news, um, in Korea right now, there's half a million people going on strike dressed up as in Sweet Game, which is pretty frightening. Um, and also in Gian, the main character, he... He, um, his past trauma is the car company that went on strike, but that refers directly to a actual event that happened in history in South Korea. And um, for the director, while he was making this, I think he had to sell his computer, <laughs> um, um, and he was rejected again and again from make for having this film be put out to the public. So, in the making of this film, do you think that he made this as a cry of like, defiance? from South Korea, personally, because there's a lot of parallels, so just like what your thoughts on about that. So can we can get into those? Yeah, uh, uh, just the last question I'll, I'll get to uh, first. Um, Hwang dong is, is, uh, you know, probably not too different from uh, what is, you know, in Korea called the uh, 386 generation, uh, who was... Uh, a little bit, right? Yeah, he's, he's my age, yeah. Maybe a little uh, younger. Yeah, so, yeah, he went uh, just kind of awkward. So he was, he was actually uh, last, very last uh, uh, year in terms of uh, college entrance in, in 1989, uh, the Seoul National Mass Communication Party. And then, um, and then he was actively, this is, uh, you know, we actually had Hong Dong Yao, but before this particular series, uh, he made Naman Sansa, which is, uh, we, my class, we watched this called Fortress, the uh, English title, coincidentally. I had no idea Squid Game was being released. Uh, but uh, he, it was the ultimate uh, box office flop, and he came here and, and showed the movie uh, in the McCormick. Uh, and we had a conversation, and he participated, you know, not actively, actively in the student demonstration at the time, but because he was a pilot of the day in the uh, late 80s and 90s, he became socially kind of you know, committed. Uh, and that energy to, for him kind of lingered on and comes from, you know, uh, not to, not well to do background and, and, and those kind of things. So he emphasized the human a lot. And this is a story, I mean, yes, it's a fantasy, but, you know, kind of human is a story of his life in, in some way. Uh, and, uh, and that's why, you know, all of those 
uh, clues in terms of you know Kiyo being a past you know, uh, work, blue collar worker and heavily involved in uh, strikes, and that's the reason why he was being too kind, right, too generous, trying to care for the uh, his fellow workers, badly, badly injured, and that's one of the reasons why he couldn't actually meet the family obligation, right? That's one of the reasons why he kind of became failure. So uh, it it, uh, it it portrays the character in that way, and and and. and, and, and and foregrounds the social, again, climate, as well as the uh, uh, environment, very firmly in, in making this a social critique content, right? Even though it's a fantasy, which is very different from the ways in which Hong Kong or you know, uh, Battle Royale is, 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 is structured. Uh, because they don't really uh, put real social background in, 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 in frame, in terms of the story that this one does. You know, although it's a total fantasy and make believe. The other thing, uh, in terms of the yeah problem with the uh, woman character, the other older character who seems to have a kind of a, you know hate, the, the, uh, you know blemish the background, you know, probably a uh, uh, form positive probably. Uh, you not I had the problem, and that's probably the reason why I I wanted to stop watching it. You know, after about two or three episodes. But unless he was, uh, you know, I was obligated to do it, uh, I probably would have because of the actually those kind of things. The stock characters to me, yeah, stock characters. Yeah, uh, uh, it was bothersome. The the gangster character has to be so violent and and, and, and so evil and you know uh, ungenerous. All of those things uh, really put me off. And that uh, bad energy is sort of sustained uh, even throughout the end. You know, when I uh, had to endure, you know, I, I, I said right away to my students, listen, you know, the, the homophobia to me is also a problem. In, in, you know, painting a portrait of an evil white capitalist, you actually make him not only disgusting, but you have to make him, you know, homosexual, right? This is uh, clearly, to me, uh, distasteful in terms of, again, portrayal of, you know, one uh, perhaps gay character and you, you, you frame him in, in a very, very negative manner. So those are the kind of again stock characters and you know uh, certain kinds of social that I I necessarily didn't agree with. So there are things again I think is badly badly scripted, uh, badly I think you know misjudged by the creator. Hopefully Hong Kong will be able to come back and maybe I can challenge him to do things. I could. But uh, uh, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, again that's. The, I, I want to talk, I think, more optimistic or positive spin on this because of the ways in which you know, I, I get asked. You know, certain kind of idiotic kind of questions, <laughs> like the one that I introduced earlier, do you think you know, Koreans would actually play the game to, uh, you know, how bad is it in terms of, again, dystopia and blah, blah, blah. So I try not to necessarily harp on the negative stuff, although I do have my own critique and, and, and person with common sensibility who shared that critique with me, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, those are the kind of ways. I, I still the strength of the strength of the series again is making us better aware of the utopian possibilities and, and certainly the positive attributes of how to live a life, despite all these pitfalls and, and maybe uh, misjudgments. I guess I would just add, just, well, thank you for this, uh, yeah, the question you. about, yeah. uh, particularly the question about the 2009 Sanyong strike, because I think that's, a, I mean, it's interesting, because I think putting that together with the first question, that seems to be both um, the possibility and the limit of, of the critique, right? That on the one hand, it does have a kind of historical consciousness, right? We do see that strike. It also has uh, one of my favorite things in um, uh, 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 movies and TV shows, particularly those that have action is like when the main characters go to the library like I think that's always a good thing in movies or, like where they get like knowledge about uh, the context of, you know this demon like you go to the library and figure out this demon was whatever right? so in, in in Squid Game the detective goes to the, the archives right and he sees the archives there and all, all, all of the other players and so it does it kind of um, uh, imply a kind of historical sensibility on the one hand right uh, but the other hand, the, the, unless you know, I don't think they mention it's the Sanyang strike. I, I think they just sort of like. I think they're. I, I, think they're, I, I could be wrong, but I, I, my sense was that. Yeah, it wasn't very explicitly framed, at least in, in, in the show. 
Um, right, so, so on the one hand, it does have that kind of historical sensibility, but on the other hand, um, it's, it's very limited. Right? Um, maybe we could do two more, two more questions, so over there and over there. There's a crowd gathering outside that couldn't get in this room, so we're really eager to <laughs> rejoin them. Um, to go based off of your uh, mentioning about the white supremacy, uh, I found it very interesting, especially since I am currently teaching uh, many culture courses uh, regarding Korean history. And it was taught, we've gone over how America had. Uh, basically infiltrated or quote unquote called Korea. Um, and it was very interesting because there's one Korean, one Japanese, and three white men uh, that were obviously American. And it, I found it very It struck me as Canadians from some reason. Canadian or something to me like when I was just watching with uh, with the insight that I, I, I knew from class uh, it, it was very interesting because it made me think of uh, the first president of Korea and how the Japanese regime, everything that negatively affected Korean companies was basically that negative aspect in Squid Games. And they were the reason that the Koreans were suffering and they were part of this game dying. It was very interesting, especially since like back in the day, if they killed if you know, they didn't fall in this power. And like, the people that were poor were the ones that were being negatively affected just like him. Thank you. There was one break. Hi. So um, I would say thinking about like I don't know since I'm personally like South Asian, I was thinking about the South Asian representation of like Squid Games, like specifically like um, Ali Abdul, um, and like you know how he's like Pakistani and like his background story and etc. And then um, I think like the older lady I forgot her name too. But like, I think she made a racist comment to Ali as well. But it's just like, I just want to know about your thoughts about the only South Asian representation, Ali Abdul in Squid Game. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, y you know, this is a problem, again, of the stock characters as well. You know, I, I am not uh, really that fascinated by, again, just um, stereotypical negative portrayals. Of, of the othering that's going on, but also stereotypical, uh, you know, othering of, that that comes out of positive, you know, uh, uh, attribute, the portrayal of othering as well. I mean, I think you know both equally have problems. And um, and South Korea, as we as, as some of you know, have have had issues with uh, again recognizing that South Korea itself is a multicultural society. Uh, it still insists on, you know, homogeneous, you know, homogeneity, <laughs> right? Uh, ethnic kind of uh, boundaries. It still insists on, you know, where citizenship ought to be uh, commanded by what? Um, you know, blood kinship, right? I mean, that's those are the kind of mandates, rather than, uh, you know, rather than uh, where you are born as a, as a precondition of, 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 of uh, defining, you know, uh, citizenship. So it is been less than cosmopolitan in terms of you know, those kind of definitions uh, of citizenship. And so this is well reflected also in you know, um, uh, content like Squid Game. Uh, and I've told you know, my friends who are actually working in the media companies in, in Korea that, uh, listen, I think it's capable of something, you know, because they all ask me, what do you, what do you think? I, and certainly there are, I've gotten these questions from you know, uh, Western media as well. Um, why is Korea so popular? Well, I mean, you know, technology-wise, technology-wise, you're able to create K-pop, you know, which is uh, which is also about technology. The music industry, mind you, is not just about you know media and acoustics and, and, and the computer. You actually have to have industrial, you know, uh, technology in order to generate this. That from social media power to uh, uh, actually music producing power, Korea's got that. In terms of again the soft power, uh, movie industry and the, uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the drama industry, and in terms of again uh, creating the digital effects uh, and, and the kind of a look and the production design and the aesthetic kind of components around it, music and so on, 
You got it. Okay, it sounds great. It's up there in terms of, again, economic power and cultural power. In terms of, again, cultural innuendo, however, when it comes to, again, defining characters and being, being sensible and sensitive, maybe those two things may be slightly different, but I'm trying to put them together here. In terms of, again, creating these characters that are outside of the Korean purview, you know, non-Korean ethnic uh, uh, people, you know, you're, you're, you're failing completely, okay? Uh, this, is, uh, this seems to me one of the ways in which you know, maybe there can be improvements to be made in order for Korea to be a truly global, I think, you know, soft power in the future. I, I should say, though, just to specifically address that, uh, that character, um, that I think that, 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 um, that figure, uh, you know, in South Korean discourse of the South Asian, you know, uh, precarious worker has gotten into the, the cultural imagination and is portrayed in interesting and often uh, useful ways, right? And you do get that reflected to some degree, right? You see his exploitation at the factory, right? You see the kind of uh, the, the horrible relationship he has with his employer who refuses to pay him, right? Um, and, and there's a film called Sandobi, which is it's a similar kind of story, right? And I think in both cases, there's an effort to kind of document it minimally those kinds of uh, abusive labor practices. But at the same time, I completely agree. I mean, this is where I think it, there's both possi possibility and also limits, right? At the same time, that's that's a, 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 a he's piece of caricature in a lot of ways as well, right? There's a limit to the, the depth of his character. Um, so uh, we have to stop here. And I, 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 Jerry has asked me to say that outside, as, as many of you know, we prepared uh, some games uh, and some prizes, and there are some drawings. So uh, uh, please. Uh, 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 enjoy them, enjoy them, and thank you once again for coming. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um,